Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For this video, we have a Watch Dogs 2 performance benchmark, and I have gathered a shipload of results for you guys. As usual, I've tested all the current generation GPUs with pretty much all the previous generation stuff as well. The average and minimum frame rate data has been recorded using the ultra quality preset at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. For the most part, the Core i7 6700K test system clocked at 4.5 GHz was used to measure GPU performance. Towards the end of the video, we will take a brief look at CPU performance and CPU utilization by comparing the 6700K and 6600K processors. I'll also show you how the game scales using various quality presets on the Radeon RX 480 8GB and GeForce GTX 680 6GB graphics cards. Testing takes place in a built up city area, I picked a corner block to load into, hijack a car, did a lap of the block and then return to the scene of the crime. Since you always load back into the game where you left off, it was important for accuracy that we started and finished in the same location each time. So without wasting any more time, let's jump to the results. First up, let's check out how the old fellas get on. Here we have the previous generation AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Surprisingly, the Fury X is only able to match the standard GTX 980, while the TI model is a good bit faster. The R9390X is also only slightly faster than the GTX 970. Not something you often see, and on that same note, the GTX 970 outpaced the vanilla 390. The GTX 960 was also able to match the R9 380 as well, though both only averaged 29 FPS using the ultra quality preset at 1080p. The ultra quality preset is pretty brutal on the previous generation GPUs. The GTX 980 Ti was only able to average 45 FPS while it dipped as low as 39 FPS. The Fury X on the other hand only averaged 39 FPS and would at times go as low as 35 FPS. Basically, it isn't really possible to play on anything less than a GTX 980 or Nano here. Goes without saying that you won't be playing Watch Dogs 2 in all of its glory at 4K with a previous generation GPU. Even the frame rates on current generation GPUs are a bit miserable at 1080p. The GTX 1060 6GB for example only averaged 51 FPS and while it is perfectly playable performance, at this resolution we hoped for more. The RX 480 is even worse, averaging just 45 FPS and dipping down to 39 FPS. Using anything slower than the RX 470, such as a GTX 1050 Ti for example, gamers will really want to reduce the quality settings. Even the mighty GTX 1080 can't average 60 FPS at 1440p, and at times was found rendering just 46 FPS. Gamers wanting to push over 60 FPS at 1440p will require a Titan XP. Yeah, that's going to go over well. The Titan XP was only able to average 46 FPS at 4K, and yeah, it costs at least $1,200 US. Still, if you have a lazy $2,400 US lying around, then it is possible to push over 60 FPS. For GTX 1080 owners, stick to 1440p, and even then the experience is less than desirable. Here we have all the previous and current generation GPUs thrown together in one big mosh pit of results. The 1080p performance looks more like what we've come to expect from these various GPUs at 1440p in most games. Now for all the 1440p results. Hit pause here if you want to have a good look at all the results. You probably don't need to see the 4K results again, but briefly here they are. Please note the only reason I threw in Titan XP SLI results was because I used this setup for measuring high-end CPU performance. Since I had the results, I added them to the graph. Since I don't have a second Fury X, please AMD fans, let me get away with not testing high-end Crossfire performance. From what I have seen though, Crossfire does scale well in this title, so there is that. Next I decided to see how the quality presets scale using the GTX 1060 and RX 480 graphics cards. First let's check out the 1060 results. Reducing the quality settings to very high, we see a rather large 33% increase in performance. Then from very high to high, a further 18% performance bump can be seen. This means from ultra to high we saw almost 60% more performance. Clearly those rocking a mid-range GPU will want to try out their very high or even high quality settings. The RX 480 is still slower than the GTX 1060 every step of the way, but like the 1060 it too sees huge performance gains when backing off the quality settings, dropping down to very high improved performance by 38% while going from very high to high boosted performance by another 23%. 
Here we have a comparison between the GTX 1060 and RX 480 side by side. Please note that overlays aren't working in this title at this point in time, so I can't provide the usual on-screen statistics using the Reaver Tuner. Anyway, you can see the Fraps frame rate counter, so keep an eye on that as we go through this quick comparison. Lastly, let's compare the GTX 1060 3GB and 6GB models side by side. As you can see, the 3GB model plays just fine at 1080p. And I should point out that we found a similar experience between these two models at 1440p as well. Using the Core i7 6700K clocked at 4.5GHz with the Titan XP handling the rendering work, I was shocked by how demanding this game was on the CPU. The second we loaded into a game, CPU utilization was pegged at 100% where it remained. We noticed no dips in performance though, or any kind of stuttering. Unsurprisingly, given what we just saw, when using the 6600K, the CPU utilization was again locked at 100%. However, we noticed no large dips in performance or any stuttering. That said, the Titan XP was at times 30 FPS slower when compared to the 6700K. Still, the Core i5 processor had no issues maintaining over 60 FPS at all times in our test, so it will work perfectly with a GTX 1070 or something slower. Also, I should note that Shadowplay was used to record gameplay footage here, using the maximum bitrate, and when not recording, the 6600K allowed for slightly better performance. Well, that concludes my testing of Watch Dogs 2. For now at least anyway. I am keen to do a bit more CPU testing with this title over the coming weeks. I am also interested to see if Ubisoft release any performance patches over the coming weeks slash months. Visually the game looks good, not mind blowing and not as good as the frame rate performance would suggest. Still, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about games being too demanding. If a game raises the bar for visual quality, then I will happily accept low frame rates. If a game requires a Titan XP for 60 FPS performance at 1440p, but doesn't really look that much better than last year's Grand Theft Auto V, expect an eyebrow to be raised. Looking at the AMD versus Nvidia battle, it seems quite clear that for now at least, Nvidia's GeForce GPUs have a rather large advantage over their Radeon rivals. To anyone that says Nvidia gimps their older generation products, just look at those GTX 980 Ti versus Fury X results. Of course, this is just one game, but it is a new game, and the results for Nvidia's previous generation Maxwell GPUs look good. For those rocking a mid-range to low-end GPU, I suggest trying out the very high, or even just the high, quality presets, as we saw significant boosts in performance when doing this with the RX 480 or GTX 1060. And the good news here being that the downgrade in visual quality isn't that huge either. Well, that pretty much wraps things up for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the testing, and as always, stay tuned because we do have more benchmark videos coming later in the week. I'm your host, Steve. Go get hacking!